Hello YouTube, I'm Mars1952 and today I'm coming to you from deep in the man cave behind a recently excavated workbench. Um, this had been buried for quite a while and hadn't been able to use it. So I finally got it up, uh, emptied off where I can use it. So <clears throat> I've been playing around with a uh, with this, this Hornady lock and load rimfire thickness gauge. Let me zoom in here. Okay. I think that's in there pretty good. Let's look at the actual gauge. So it clamps onto a dial caliper. In this case, I'm using a Starrett dial caliper, which is very high quality. Um, so you the bullets go in here. Oops, let me get where I can see here. The bullets go in here, and then you run the dial caliper down and measure it. But first, of course, you have to zero it. See, I've already zeroed this one. You uh, loosen this nut, turn the dial so the gauge reads whatever you want. If you had digital calipers, it would work differently. So, this I was real excited about this. Um, let me do another close-up here. So, this is this is one little flaw that I found in the plan. That, that is the rim thicknesses of these bullets are all, it's not uniform all the way around. So, I'm going to turn the bullet. You can see right now we're getting, I cannot see because I don't have my glasses on. like 37 and a half. All right, so I'll back that off, turn the bullet a little bit, put it back. I don't know if you can read that, but each time I do that, it's going to be a different number until I get back to the same spot where it was 37 and a half. Alright, so uh, this uh, Hornady rim thickness gauge clamps to the dial caliper with thumb screws. And I have that, you know, it's nice and flat on there, as flat as it will go. Um, once you get that on there, there's another one of these cones for 17 caliber. I don't, I'm not using that one. Run that down. Loosen this nut and adjust the dial till it's zero. So then you put your bullet back in and measure the thickness. Now, this is sort of time consuming and uh, you have to give a good solid roll to get that back out of there so there's room. But this gauge, I don't know if this particular one is defective or they're all defective. Let me show you the anvil. Let me zoom in here. You might be able to see it. Probably not. It's sort of small. But in the center of the anvil, there is a little dimple that sticks out, probably two or three thousandths of an inch. And of course, that's right in the center where you're supposed to measure. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be there, but depending on how that bullet hits it, it's going to be in a different spot. And we're measuring the rim thickness, not the, not the, the stamp in the end of the bullet. Seems to me that should be flat. So I adjusted it, <clears throat> adjusted the gauge, so that uh, when it's clamped on there, and I run this down, I'm measuring in a place where that dimple isn't going to interfere. Unclamp down, but even that uh, that wasn't working so well. Now I have another, another visual aid here to let you know why. So you have your anvil on one side. That's probably on this side actually, and this will simulate the bullet. So this thing is not fitting into the jaws of the uh, dial caliper perfectly flat. So what happens is you get this type of arrangement. This is sort of an exaggeration. Zoom in again. So imagine that's the anvil, 
this is the bullet and you dial them together what's happening is it's touching like this you're not getting a good flat measurement now if it was perfectly flat then you would uh, get a, the thickness the maximum thickness of the rim every time um, and I'm not sure what you actually want to get but so if it's one the way I have it or the way this um, tool is is this slightly cockeyed like this so it touches on one part and you get a measurement if you rotate the bullet it touches on a different part you get a different measurement every time you rotate the bullet you get a different measurement so it's sort of hard to decide what um, you really need so I spent quite a bit of time measuring uh, all these bullets here in front of me I have Winchester White Box, Remington uh, Golden Bullet, and Federal Bulk Pack. Uh, I wanted to see what was better. I also have some uh, CCI Green Tag Target. I have some Remington Target. Uh, some of this stuff is um, 20 years old, pretty close to it. Um, I hadn't got around to measuring the CCI Mini Mags or uh, some uh, slightly higher quality Federal Target Performance. I've got a couple other grades of 22 in the, in the box over there. Um, so, you know, I was hoping to come up with a nice, um, weed out the good stuff uh, and keep that separate and then the rest of the stuff I just plink away. Uh, so the problem is, you get a wide variety of sizes here and the, this is the Winchester white box, I think. Let me double check before I say it wrong here. Yeah, this is a Winchester white box. <clears throat> so. This one is 40 thousandths of an inch rim thickness. That was before I discovered that they're different all the way around. Um, so, and then we have 41, 42, nothing in 43, 44, but one of them so far has measured 45. Just, uh, I haven't done very many bullets yet. So 39, 38, 37. So when I first started doing it, I just, I would round up and round down. If it was, a, if it was like 39, Point six, the I, you can't actually read point six a thousand, so you can just guess because you have a, a one mark. Like this is the dial, and here is 39, and here's 40, and the needle might be right in here. So you have to guess about what it is and round up and round down. So I was just calling uh, the ones that were less than half a thousand either way. I was calling those 40s, and then a little bit later I decided, well, let's just put the ones that are exactly 40 in the middle. And the ones that are 40 plus on the right, ones that are 40 minus on the left, and the same with 41. So I started doing that, and I, I was going to have enough of them that I could have a nicely um, calibrated set of bullets. But the problem is, <laughs> once again, like these are all supposed to be 40. I've measured these about three times, and they keep coming up different measurements. And that's because when you put them in, run this down. Um, this, I'll show you on this one particular bullet here. You zoom in again. I have to do some heavy editing on this. Alright, so maybe you can see it. Hopefully you can read the gauge. That says it's like 40 and a half. Rotate the bullet. That's just, just barely over 40. Rotate it again. Now it's 39 and a half. Did it again. We got a little over 40. So this is varying just in the round the rim. It's varying uh, plus and minus a half a thousandths. Uh, that one's not too extreme either. There's some of these other ones that vary quite a bit. So I don't know uh, what to use. Well, I don't know what to use. Um, how do you decide what measurement to use and which thickness of rim works the best? When I did the the green uh, CCI green tag target ammo, uh, you can see in this block here, these are all 40 thousandths of an inch, and they're very close. It's plus and minus just a little bit over 40 thousandths. And when I take the uh, each bullet and measure it, I'll do one here, there was another little problem that these were had a lot of lubricant on them, and that was goofing up the measurement every time. 
because the lubricant would scrape off and get lodged under the rim. So, like this one, CCI green tag. Zoom in. So right there it's plus 40, or 40 plus a little bit. Exactly 40. Exactly 40. Just a little bit less than 40. A little bit less than 40. Exactly 40. So, uh, like the Winchester, the, uh, the CCI green tags, those are very, very little. Um, these ones that are 40 thousandths of an inch, very less than half a thousandths total. Like, a, you know, a little bit over, a little bit under. 45. Forty-five and a quarter. Forty-five. All right, so that one's not varying too much, but it's five thousandths of an inch thicker than any other bullet. Um, and then these are these Remington Target bullets here. None of them were more than thirty-nine thousandths thick. I just did one box. Um, one box of a hundred. So this one is just a hair over thirty-nine. You rotate it a hair under 40. It's right in the middle. 39. Still 39. So this one's getting plus and minus half a thousandth of an inch. Um, I should have kept it out, but I found some of them that were varying as much as three thousandths of an inch all the way around the rim. <clears throat> So, so far this has been a big waste of time. Uh, I haven't shot any of it yet because I don't know uh, what rim thickness is going to be good and what's not. You can do a lot of testing, I suppose. So, anybody that has, has done this before successfully, let me know of what, what you did and which thickness of rim you decided to use. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to send this gizmo back because it doesn't sit flat on the... Uh, on the dial caliper and uh, I passed up another type different brand that looks like a slide rule and you slide the middle part of it out you drop your bullet in slide it back and then there's a gauge uh, along the uh... wait a minute it doesn't go there there's a gauge that marks off I don't remember what it marks off but it didn't mark off 40 thousand so it was like 1 through 10 and uh, so you, you sort them out that way. Now that type of slide gauge where you have a where it drops into a hole like this and the thing slides over a tapered slide and stops, it's going to measure only the thickest part. Yeah, I guess it depends on how how flat the underside of that slide is. Alright, so when I figure out um, what thickness works or what I should be looking for and how I should sort them so hopefully with your help, somebody out there, I will do a part two on this. And uh, hopefully they'll have some shooting in it with nice little tight groups. And I also want to do, like I said, once I get to where I know what I'm doing, I'm going to sort the higher quality ammo. Uh, and I'm going to get a little bullet scale. If you have recommendations for a, gra a small grain scale, um, I'd like to be multi-purpose, so for reloading, I haven't done any of that yet, but I want to be able to do reloading, but it has to be very accurate. I'm not going to pay money for a, a scale that's not accurate. And a lot of people confuse readability with accuracy. Just because you can read it down to some tiny little number doesn't mean it's accurate at that, and repeatable at that number. Now, uh, especially with digital scales, people have an idea that those are more accurate. They're not any more accurate than a balance beam scale. A good balance beam scale is going to be just as accurate as a digital scale. It's just that the digital scales are easier to read. That's readability. That's enough for now.